I'm feeling good today. How are you guys feeling? Today, I'm going to talk about photography, websites, do's and don'ts. Over the holidays, I put aside some time to sit on my couch, sit in my bed, sit in the sauna, and revamp my entire website. So if you're new here, my name is Justin Mott. I am a photographer with a YouTube channel. I totally stole that from someone else, not a YouTuber with a photography channel. Hope that makes sense. I am an editorial and commercial photographer based here in Vietnam. I've been working here for almost 20 years. I've shot for just about every single major publication out there, and I like to keep it real with you guys, and I like to talk real, because my goal, my goal of this channel, is to help you guys improve using my experience. Now, first of all, if you're an amateur, do you need a website? Well, that's really up to you. If you want to showcase your work in a better platform than Instagram, then yes, have a website. It's cheap. You can even have them done for free. Now, I use my website for business, so keep that in mind. I have multiple photography websites for different photography business that I'm involved in. But for you guys, it's just a better, it's just a nice alternative to Instagram. Instagram is a pretty crappy place to show your images. I barely show images on there, and every time I do, I'm disappointed. All right, common mistakes, do's and don'ts. I'm gonna just sort of dive into it. Let's start, first of all, with the name of your website. Do me a big favor, stop with the phrases that relate to photography. Even if you're an amateur, stop with the light chaser, shadow chaser, rectangle maker, F22, all these different play on words that you think are cute about photography. Just put your name, maybe put your name like I do. I put Justin Mott and photographer on there so people like, no, okay, this is the right website. I mean, you could add another title too if you're a photographer and filmmaker, if you can back it up. And that's another theme today. Like, don't put stuff on there that you can't back up either visually or just in real life as well. So if you don't make films, don't put Filmmaker on there. But also don't do that initials thing I see people do where it's like some sort of crazy play on initials with a camera and the letters and you can't make out what it is. If you're a professional, first of all, when people go to your page, they need to know, editors need to know, potential clients need to know that they're on the right website. You know, I'm Justin Mott, there's other Justin Mott's out there. They need to know that this is Justin Mott, the photographer, boom, it's right there. So yeah, maybe in smaller circles, I'm known as the Leica Light Chaser, or LLC, as they refer to me. I'm not gonna put that on my website. I, I'm not actually calling that, <laughs> I hope no one misunderstands that, I'm just making a joke. But no one wants to hire LLC, they wanna hire Justin Mott, or at least I hope they do, and same with you. Amateur, pro, just put your name, put the word photographer, add filmmaker if that's what you are, fine. Keep it simple, keep it clean, make it easy for people to understand they're on the right website. Next thing, the location. Now, sometimes people list locations, sometimes they don't. I do because it's important that people know that I'm based in Vietnam, but that I'm available worldwide for assignments. And again, like I said before, I have the work to back that up. I have work from Vietnam, but also have work from all over the world as well. So I like to put that, not in my logo, but it's pretty clear on the homepage, oh, this guy's based in Vietnam, because I do get a lot of European clients, a lot of American clients that want a photographer based here, but also, don't pigeonhole me. I like to go out and shoot other places too, so I put available worldwide, and I back it up with work that is from worldwide. If you're an individual, an amateur, and it doesn't matter where you are or where you're based because you're not working with clients, if you have no aspirations to make money in photography, then yeah, you can leave it off there. The next thing is the colors of your website. I see people get really cute with this as well. Yeah, have colors in your branding. Yes, you can have nice fonts for your logo. Cool, all that, but the main base of your website, where your images are shown, black background, white background, maybe gray, that's about it. Don't get cute with red, greens, yellows, all that stuff. It's gonna clash with your color image. It's not gonna work well with, even if you have a full black and white portfolio as well. Just keep it simple, let your images do the talking for themselves. The next thing I wanna talk about is your landing page. The first page people see when they get to your website. So it's got my name, clean and simple, Justin Mott, photographer. I've got based in Vietnam, I've got available worldwide, and I lead with one of my most powerful and most recognized images. And then I've got a gallery of images in collage form because some people might not be into the wildlife stuff. So I lead with that. That's my heavy imagery at the top of the gallery because that's what I'm focused on right now. If you're a wedding photographer, that, that's where you make your income from. That's what you do. But you did street photography in Cuba. Your wedding website shouldn't lead with that. It should lead with your wedding work. It probably shouldn't even have your street photography in Cuba on there either. I, that's just my take on it because I don't think people really care about that. People that are going to your website for wedding photography want to see that you're passionate about wedding photography, not that you're passionate about street photography. So justamont.com, that's my website for editorial photography, documentary photography, assignment photography, and my personal projects. So that's what I lead with. And that's changing as I change as a photographer. So again, that every year thing, looking at my work, analyzing my work, thinking about what I shot that year, thinking about what I wanna promote and do the year moving forward, that's what I'm gonna lead with. So I like to use that collage format. I lead with my wildlife photojournalism work. I don't put the full stories up there. I lead with my strongest work 
And so I put little snippets of all the stories in there. I might put like three images from the rhino story, three images from the elephant story, three images from the sloth story. And then I go into some assignment work for the New York Times, some travel stuff, some stuff that's clear about the destination where I'm at in Vietnam. I know it's kind of a weird combination because I shoot a lot in Africa and I'm based here in Vietnam, but that's what I am. That's what I do. And it's working for me. So that's how I promote it. That's how I lay it out. And that's what I like to do. So it makes sense for me. What makes sense for you is going to be different. So put a lot of thought into that. But again, what you're not going to see on there is my hotel work that's going on a separate website because it doesn't make sense with that work. It doesn't make sense with what that website's all about. So yeah, that's my landing page. Just think of it as an overview. It's got my name. It's got my location. It's got a nice variety of my work. And I want to use that page to get you hooked. So then for a client, again, my goal is editorial clients. I want them to, okay, this guy's legit. Let me now look at what I might want to hire him to do. So then I've got galleries for portrait, street photography, wildlife conservation, personal projects. So it's like a starting point. It's like the first date and hopefully that first date goes well on my landing page to lead them to the other work. All right, so while I'm on the topic of galleries, this is an important one, let's dive into it. I'm gonna break this into sort of two categories. So I'll talk about naming your galleries and then gallery layout or design. So as far as naming your galleries, this one I see people mess up all the time. I use traditional galleries because I work in sort of that traditional field as a photojournalist. So I've got travel, I've got portrait work, I've got street photography, and I've got tear sheets on there so people can see the clients I've worked for and how they've used my work. And then I've also got my personal projects. And then within that folder, I've got all my different projects, but I've only got work that's worthy of a personal project. So if you started like a street photography project yesterday and you've got eight shots, that's not worthy of a gallery. If you flew here to Hanoi and shot like for two days, and you got a couple cool pictures of people in conical hats, not worthy of a gallery. If you spent months or weeks or years in that project, then yeah, like that's worthy of a gallery. Uh, and it's, it's not, it's just total time, it's total quality. Think of it this way, each gallery should be worthy of its own exhibition. Now it doesn't have to be like a, this grand exhibition at MoMA, but if it was like, is it worthy of even exhibition at like your local cafe? Is that collection of work worthy of that. And if so, then yeah, make it into a gallery, but also clean up the naming a little bit. Like people just do like pets or like my dog yesterday or like these weird titles. Like it has to be clear. People need to know what they're looking at. And if you're a professional photographer, especially step it up. It needs to be clear what you do and they need to know that you know what's worthy of making your website as well. So think long and hard about the edit for your website, your landing page, your individual galleries, the categories. My categories are based on the kind of work that I actually do and wanna get hired to shoot. And each of them is a very well-rounded body of work. Also give the option to click on the image and see it big, because often people do wanna see your images larger and get a feel for them. So have the light box option so they can click on it, see it big. And that's another thing as well, just make your images as big as possible on your website. You're a photographer. People want to see images big. Give them the option to do so. Also, do a nice edit of your work. Try to weed out the redundancy the best you can. It's very helpful to work with a separate editor. I'm not saying that because I sell portfolio reviews and I sell classes where I help people audit their work, edit their projects, things like that. I'm not selling it. I'm not. Don't buy it. I don't want you to. I'm not. I mean, yeah, of course, hire me. I'm awesome at it. But in all serious, just get another set of eyes on it and another set of eyes that you trust. Another photographer, a friend, or trade. You look at theirs, they look at yours. That's kind of weird, but you know what I mean. It's just nice to have another set of eyes on your work that can help you weed out redundancy. There's no emotional attachment for them to those images. And that can be a big roadblock for a lot of people because it's like that trip was important to you or you spent a lot of time in that shot. But in the end, it's just not really a good shot or it's the first day with that new camera or, or whatever. Like that other person doesn't care about that. They just care if it's a good image and if it resonates to them or not, and they'll tell you, or at least try to find someone that can tell you that. Hope that makes sense. The next thing is just don't confuse people. I kind of alluded to this earlier, but just make it clear what you do on your website and who you are on your landing page and then throughout your website and then in your bio as well. So. Like for me, I make it clear that I do travel work, I do wildlife photojournalism work, I'm an assignment photographer, I'm not dusting in wedding shots in there or randomly lit studio portraits. No, everything fits the ecosystem, everything matches. For an amateur, you don't have to say you're an amateur out there, just put your work, put in simple galleries, don't try to pretend you are someone that you're not. And that's the beauty of being amateur, you can put whatever work you want out there, you don't have to think about 
the business side of things. And that's like a lot more pure than what a lot of us do. All right, guys, if you're enjoying this episode, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you want a more deeper, intimate relationship with me, you can join my channel and join our little community. It's $4.99 a month. It's like taking me out for an American cup of coffee or like several Vietnamese cup of coffees every month. That gets you bonus content, early release content, and also gets you access to our little private Facebook group where we share images, talk about photography, and I give you guys little mini assignments. It's a fun little community. You can join easily by just hitting the join button below. All right, the next thing is the about or the bio page. Just keep it simple. Yeah, you can sprinkle in something personal in there, but don't make it too personal or too long about the personal stuff. So for example, like I like cycling, but I'm not gonna go on and on about that I have a titanium bike and how many kilometers I do a week and my FTP. I'm not gonna talk about that stuff. So like for me, for example, it's all feeding my ecosystem like we talked about before it's reinforcing the things that i want to reinforce i do wildlife photojournalism i do assignment work here's some of the big clients i've worked for and on that note too when you're talking about those big clients you've worked for don't exaggerate earn it make that your goal to earn it if that's what you want but don't exaggerate and definitely don't lie. So if you did one assignment for the New York Times, don't call yourself a frequent contributor. If you had one picture liked by a National Geographic editor and reposted on their personal page, don't say that you've shot or been published in National Geographic. Be honest, be clear, and if that's what you want, I'm not saying everyone wants it, but if that's what you want, go out and get it. Don't just fake it. Forget the fake it till you make it thing when it comes to that stuff. It's a small community out there. It seems big, but it's small. Photographers love to gossip, so no BS about that stuff. I didn't call myself a frequent contributor for the New York Times until I shot like 20 assignments. I mean, you could do a little bit earlier than that, but I was just being careful. Small community, people talk, it's gonna get back to people, not worth it in the long term. And then have it nice and clear and concise about who you are, what you do, where you are. Moving on to your contact page. This one's simple, but people do make this mistake. Stop it with the forms. It's tempting with the forms. It's nice for your backend organization, but do you wanna fill out forms? I don't like filling out forms. Where does that email go? What list did I just join? I don't know. Just put your information out there. Keep it clear, keep it simple. I put my name, I put my email. I don't like to put my phone number on there because I just don't. I have an assistant. She handles some of my archive request stuff, so I put her information on there. I'm not trying to big time people or look more important than I am. She works for me full time, she handles that stuff. I also have gallery representation for some of my edition prints, and that's in New York, so I put that contact information as well. You don't need a giant list for every single person that's ever worked with you or that or collaborates with you, no, but again, those three things are important to me right now, so that's what I put up. A lot of people, you might have a rep, some people don't. It's fine, it's okay if you don't. Just put your name, put your email out there, no forms, have it easy for them to copy and paste and then contact you. News section or recent news, yeah, I have one of those, but only do it if you have enough work to back it up because it's kind of like sad and depressing if you've had no news in two years or if you've had a bunch of news and then you have a lull in your workload or assignments, which is normal by the way, so don't stress out about that. Leave the date off of it. I like to leave the date off because that doesn't look great if, oh my goodness, this person hasn't had like any news in the last few months or you haven't had a chance to update in the last few months because you've been so busy. Hopefully that's the case. Just leave the date off it. A lot of those blogs like Squarespace blog, the default is to like show the date. So I leave the date off of it and then I just update it constantly and I feel like I have enough news. Hopefully that continues to happen to warrant a news page. Only you can make that call whether you have enough news worthy of having a news page. The next thing is to optimize your website. Well, you should optimize it really for for phones, for tablets, and for desktops and laptops, but prioritize what is most important to you. Not what gets the most views, but what's most important to you. So like people that look at my website on their phone aren't typically the people that hire me. So I want it to work well on my phone, but not every website has those options. Again, Squarespace is pretty good at that. Social buttons, so like adding a button for your Instagram, your YouTube, your LinkedIn, stuff like that. My thoughts on this are just if it relates to your photography and your photography business or that photography business, that website that you have, put it on there. If you're using Twitter to talk about political stuff, don't risk that because your client might not have the same belief as you or might misinterpret something or doesn't need to necessarily, even just professional, doesn't need to see your battle with whoever you're talking to about whatever that is. So if it's not strictly related to your photography business, leave it off there. That's my thoughts on it. And lastly, just have fun with the process. Like go do it. Start a website now. Do it for fun. Do a mock website. And then you can decide later on if you want to hit publish. But it's not nearly as hard as you think. I think it's important for everyone out there. Again, not just pros to have a website. It's fun to have a website. It's fun to showcase your work. It's your own little personal gallery. I mean, aim towards having an exhibition. That would be great. But start with the gallery and I don't know it's just fun it's not as hard as you think a lot of these website companies make it easy again I use Squarespace that works for me there's plenty of other ones out there there's free options play around with it even Squarespace you can build a website for free on the back end and play around with it for a few months it's just fun I enjoy it 
and I encourage everyone to have a website. So make one. Let me know how it goes and share it with me in the comment section here. I'd love to hear it. Thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to check out my online store at justamont.com. I've got presets on there that will not make you a better photographer, but they will add some pop your images. I've got my mentorship program. I've got one-on-one -on -one classes. I've got a few slots left for my Northern Vietnam Photography Workshop in March. If you're watching this before March 2024, check that out. It's a fantastic workshop. It's an intimate workshop with a total of five participants only. Um, come join me, come hang out with me, come shoot with me. Sorry, this was a long one. I went back to doing long form videos, but there's just a lot to say about websites, a lot of mistakes. I hope you guys don't make these mistakes, but if you do, now it's time to fix them. Thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and don't forget to have a wonderful day.